Ranger is your basic assault class. They start off with good consistent damage and they maintain it throughout the entirety of your XCOM 2 campaign. Whereas most classes can deal damage but generally fall into a more specialized role, the Ranger is just your go-to class anytime you need to take a unit off the board. They also have a few abilities that give them more mobility than other classes. Both of these things mean that I almost always have at least one Ranger in my squad. When it comes to weapon attachments, it's pretty obvious that the main attachment you should be aiming for is the laser sight. It boosts crit chance and increases as you get closer to the target, both things that the shotgun excels at already. After that, hair trigger for the bonus chance to shoot is always nice, and once you get to Colonel Rank Expanded Magazine is also very helpful. You can make an argument for stocks, since the shotgun has the lowest accuracy at range, but there are other classes that benefit from it more, and you generally want to be staying close to make the most of your close range accuracy. In terms of utility items, I generally go for Talon rounds to also increase crit chance and crit damage. After that, it really depends how you want to spec your ranger. You could take a light or heavy suit for either the grapple or a heavy weapon, or some other utility item such as a backup grenade. Their two ability branches are Scout, and Assault. Scout focuses more on concealment and gun abilities, whereas Assault is more focused around their sword. To start with, the Ranger's basic ability is Slash. Slash is a melee attack that can either be done over a single move, or a full dash. In the beginning, with starting conventional gear, Slash will deal 3 to 5 damage with an 88% chance to hit. These can be increased with the Blade Master ability which we'll talk about in a moment, and the chance to hit also goes up as your soldier ranks up. Slash can be a useful ability in the early game if there's an enemy who you can't easily flank or deal with in a single move. Melee attacks will ignore cover and with a full dash you can cover quite a lot of distance. Also, sectoids have a unique trait called melee vulnerability where they take plus 3 damage from any melee attack. Big deal. There are two main problems with Slash that make it extremely risky to use. The first is that you have to sprint into the enemy's territory in order to use it, which means that unless it's the last pod on the map, there's a very high chance that you'll activate another pod while doing it. The second is that you're often very limited in what cover you can take after the slash. You're usually left in an easily flanked position, or even stood completely out in the open. On top of all that, without the Blade Master ability, there's a not insignificant chance that you just miss the attack and do no damage whatsoever. 88% sounds like a lot, but you'd be surprised how often it misses, and enemies with a high defense stat are harder to hit. This means that while Slash can be useful in certain situations, it's often just too risky to use. At Corporal Rank, you have Phantom and Blade Master. Phantom is a passive ability that has two aspects to it. When the squad is revealed, either by taking an offensive action or just being detected, a Phantom Ranger will keep their concealment. And on missions where you start without concealment, like Haven Retaliations or VIP Extractions, a Phantom Ranger still gets to start with concealment. Due to the way that concealment is introduced to you in XCOM 2, on paper this ability may not sound very good, especially compared to Blade Master. But it's actually one of the most important abilities in the game, at least until you get a second Reaper in War of the Chosen. This is because finding pods without activating them is incredibly powerful. It allows you to set up overwatch traps just out of sight and have the pods patrol into you, scatter, and then potentially get a bunch of free damage before you even start your turn. Let's take an example. Let's say you have a squad of 4 standard troops with no scout. While you can overwatch crawl around the map, it's slow and you still might end up accidentally wandering into a pod. In this case you only get the 4 attacks to deal with that pod before it gets to shoot at you. 
Whereas with proper scouting, you can get 3 overwatch shots when they scatter, 3 attacks from your non-concealed units, and your scout can still take a shot if you need it. I always take Phantom on my first Ranger for this reason. If I don't have a Reaper yet, I may even take it on a second one, just so that I always have a scout available. Once you get a second Reaper in War of the Chosen, I may consider retraining the Ranger to switch to Blade Master. Reapers basically do everything Phantom Rangers do, but better. So there's no reason to keep Phantom once you've got two Reapers to switch between. Blade Master is another passive ability that focuses on improving the shortcomings of Slash and other sword based abilities. It adds plus 2 damage and plus 10 aim to all sword attacks. This means that, at corporal rank, your basic slash ability goes from 3 to 5 at 91% on basic enemies, to a guaranteed 5 to 7 damage. This makes slash both much more powerful and much more reliable. It also applies to other sword based abilities, such as blade storm and reaper. It's just a nice little buff to have when you don't need phantom anymore. After I've got my two scouts, I train all my rangers with blade master, and once I've got two reapers, I often switch my phantom rangers to blade master as well. At sergeant rank, you get shadow strike and shadow step. Shadow strike is a passive ability that grants you plus 25 aim and plus 25 crit chance when shooting from concealment. This is a pretty big bonus that can really help to deal massive crit damage at key moments. The problem with this ability is that unless you take the next one, conceal, you can only ever use it once per mission. Once you break concealment, there's no way to re-enter it except for some very rare special modifiers. This in combination with the alternative ability means I almost never pick this. Shadow Step is a passive ability that grants immunity to all forms of reaction fire, including Overwatch. This combines really well with movement based abilities such as slash and run and gun, allowing you to move even if there's an enemy on overwatch. I almost always pick this ability because it's just so useful in clutch moments. If you're otherwise pinned and can't move, you can send a shadow step ranger out to damage the enemy, even if it's just a thrown grenade, to free up the rest of your squad. At Lieutenant, you unlock Conceal and Run and Gun. Conceal is very straightforward. It's an active ability that lets you re-enter concealment once per mission. I imagine the point of this ability is to let Phantom Rangers contribute to a fight and then re-enter concealment. The problem with this is that in most situations you don't need to break concealment with your scout. As long as you set up your overwatches right, you'll eliminate most pods long before they become a problem. Also it means having to give up the alternative ability. Run and Gun is the bread and butter of the Ranger class. It's an active ability with a 3 turn cooldown that allows you to take an action after dashing. You can use this to do all kinds of things that you'd normally just not have the reach for. Dash up behind an enemy for a flank shot. Reach an objective at the last possible moment. Reload, move, and then still be able to shoot. It just gives you that little bit of extra flexibility when you need it. You just have to be careful not to reveal additional pods when you're dashing. This is the ability I usually pick, just because the added mobility is so useful. At the fourth rank, Captain, you get Implacable and Blade Storm. Implacable is a passive ability that grants you a single move, not an action, if you score a kill. This ability helps compensate for the inherent riskiness of the ranger, by allowing you to pull back after an aggressive flank or slash. This can actually be really good. It's just that due to how heavily XCOM 2 is focused around alpha striking, a lot of the time there won't be any enemies left at the end of your turn anyway. So being able to relocate doesn't really matter. This makes it a fairly niche ability where it's only really useful when you're completely overwhelmed. 
You could also use the extra move to reach an extraction zone, or head towards an objective, but that's still fairly rare use cases. Blade Storm is a passive ability that gives automatic sword attacks on any enemy that moves or attacks in melee range. This is just another source of free damage in certain circumstances and is particularly useful against melee enemies like the Stun Lancer. Because there's no limit on when, and how many sword strikes you can do, you can use it to do some really degenerate things. For example, you can position yourself right next to an enemy so that if they survive your attack, then you'll finish them off with your sword when they try to move away. If you're feeling really risky, you can even deliberately move your Bladestorm Ranger into the middle of a reinforcement drop, or even an unaware pod. That way you get free sword strikes against all of them when they scatter. The one thing you have to bear in mind when doing this is that purifiers have a 50-50 chance of exploding when they die, so it's not a good idea to try it against them. There are so many times where Bladestorm has really saved me, so I usually end up picking it for most of my rangers. The only downside is that like all sword attacks, it's still possible for it to miss, so you should only really rely on it when you have no other options. At Major, you have Deep Cover and Untouchable. Deep Cover is yet another passive ability, this time allowing you to hunker down automatically if you don't attack during the turn. I wish I could say something nice about this ability, but I can't. The simple fact of the matter is that there are very few cases where you wouldn't want to be attacking in a turn. If you have active enemies, you want to be either shooting or overwatching, or preparing to do one of those things. And if you don't have active enemies, then hunkering down is useless. Untouchable on the other hand is a passive ability that gives you complete immunity from the next attack if you get a kill. It should go without saying that this ability is incredibly useful. It's very similar to Implacable, in that it gives you a bonus if you get a kill. However whereas Implacable is a small bonus that may end up being meaningless, Untouchable is just such a great fallback option. You will always have that safety cushion of knowing that the first attack against your ranger will definitely miss. If there's only one enemy left after your ranger gets a kill, you can even use them as a pseudo mimic beacon. By deliberately leaving them out of cover, you can bait the enemy into attacking them instead, proccing their untouchable bonus and potentially drawing fire away from the rest of your squad. This actually combines really well with implacable, in that you can move them after the kill for maximum effect. Finally at Colonel rank, we have Rapid Fire and Reaper. Rapid Fire is one of the great multi-damage abilities in XCOM 2. It's an active ability where you fire twice at one enemy and each shot has a minus 15 aim penalty. Originally it didn't have a cooldown, which was insanely broken, but it eventually got patched to have a 5 turn cooldown. The thing about rapid fire is it's almost always better to take a rapid fire shot instead of a regular one. Let's take an example. Let's say there's an enemy which you have an 80% chance to hit. That means there's a 1 in 5 chance that you just completely miss the target and do no damage. Let's get this show on the road. With rapid fire, you're instead taking two 65% shots. In this case, there's only a 12.25% chance you'll completely miss, and there's also a 42.25% chance that you'll actually hit both shots. This ability is a no-brainer for me. While the cooldown is pretty extreme, the ability to occasionally dump that much damage onto a single target is just too useful in the late game. It's also just useful if you need to try and guarantee a hit. The alternative ability is Reaper, an active ability that grants the Ranger an action each time they get a melee kill during their turn. The first attack cannot miss, each following attack deals less and less damage, and it has a 4 turn cooldown. This can be used to chain sword attacks and clear a large amount of enemies. There's no limit on the amount of attacks you can do with Reaper, and you can stop at any time to take a standard shot, 
or any other action, which isn't affected by the damage penalty. My biggest problem with Reaper is that it tends to take a lot of setup to get the most out of it. In order to chain multiple attacks, you need to guarantee the kill on an enemy, and each enemy needs to have lower and lower health to compensate for your falling sword damage. Not to mention that generally speaking, you ideally don't want to be engaging more than 3 or 4 enemies at a time anyway. And it still suffers the same problems as Slash, where you run the risk of activating more pods, and leaving yourself in a potentially bad situation if you don't kill the enemy. Basically, I prefer Rapid Fire because it's always a good safe ability, whereas Reaper can be great, but it requires a certain set of circumstances to be really good. My typical Ranger setup is Blade Master, Shadow Step, Run and Gun, Blade Storm, Untouchable, and Rapid Fire. As I said previously, my first Ranger is always a Phantom Ranger, but the vast majority of them follow this template. This setup gives you a great amount of flexibility, in that you have a class who can move really far without triggering overwatch, deal a ton of damage to priority targets, and also has some added utility with Bladestorm and Untouchable.